listening to MuniCast, the podcast that discusses municipal leadership. Season four of MuniCast is brought to you by SaskTel's innovation and collaboration team. SaskTel can help you sort through the noise to create solutions that add value quickly, whether it's reducing your environmental footprint, driving investment, community development, or just saving money. Contact your SaskTel account manager to find out more. MuniCast is hosted by SUMA, the voice of Saskatchewan's hometowns. I'm Stephanie, SUMA's Education and Events Coordinator, and in Season 4 of MuniCast, we are tuning in to the 2023 SUMA Convention and Trade Show and speaking to some of the key participants. On this episode, I'm joined by Randy Plazo, Business Development Manager, Business Sales and Solutions with SASTEL. SASTEL is a proud participant in the SUMA Convention and Trade Show as both a sponsor and an exhibitor. SASTEL is making a concerted effort to engage with communities of all sizes to better understand the problems they are trying to solve and to share SASTEL's approach to innovation and collaboration through smart communities. Welcome, Randy. Thank you for joining me today for this conversation. Oh, well, thanks so much for having me. Each year, SASTEL participates in SUMA's Municipal Marketplace and Trade Show at the annual SUMA convention. For SASTEL, what is the benefit of connecting with municipal leaders at the trade show? Uh, so for me, I think over the last few years, we've all realized how much we miss the face-to-face conversations and how much more we're able to connect with each other in person. Uh, I know that's been a big, as much as I like doing teams and it's it's filled in some gaps, I think that that's a huge piece that people have been missing. So coming to events like this is not only enables us, and I say us as Sastel and others, to build a more personal connection, but it allows us to delve further into conversations on the exciting things that are happening in communities across Saskatchewan, as well as what challenges exist and, and potentially how SASTEL can help. Personally, uh, I believe that community leaders also enjoy being able to engage in the innovation process, and that's a big thing that we're undertaking here at SASTEL, where they have the ability to speak about their problems and help guide possible solutions that come out of it. To me, it's very clear that there are common challenges across many communities that that they all face. So for us, being able to pick up on some of those common themes enables us to take a better and broader view and find solutions to problems that can help serve multiple communities throughout the province, as opposed to sort of that one solution for one customer. I think that's something that really speaks to a lot of our membership as well when um, municipalities are looking for different ways to connect with the other municipalities, different regions, um, and different service providers very much like SASTEL. What would you say brings SASTEL back to the SUMA Convention and Trade Show each year? You know, I, I think different people from SASTEL get different value out of coming to these events. But I think a common thing, at least that I specifically feel, is, you know, while it's great to meet municipal leaders, it's also great to meet the people who are right in the trenches and dealing with those day-to-day challenges that come with running our communities. So hearing directly from them provides all of us amazing insight into the challenges that exist, but also allows them to share what they would like to see as a desired outcome of the solutions that we may be able to bring forward. And really, there's no better insight gain than talking to those who are right down there doing the work that can keep our communities running. The other benefit I find is that it's an opportunity for us to be able to showcase some of the things that we're working on bringing to Saskatchewan. I love to be able to touch and feel a device and see an application running in person versus looking at a brochure or a website. That touch and feel element is, to me, a very critical component of being able to see it working in action. And I think of some of the examples that we've had the opportunity to demonstrate, and one of them is around water meters. So we've been playing in the water meter space for a little bit now, trying to show proof of concepts about how we can start to automate the process of capturing water meter data, but even getting into some community infrastructure and around monitoring and identifying water leaks. And so, but the ability to have just a small display where you have a small water meter with actual water running through it, the sensors that we connect to it, and being able to show how that connects to a gateway that we're putting in place really makes it real as opposed to just saying, hey, we can automate the process of capturing your water meter data. So I find that touch and feel is a really good opportunity and doing it and showcasing it to those who are in the position to implement and deploy this is a valuable connection on both sides, not just ours. But being able to touch in the feel and be in person with some of these things, we have a lot of opportunities to connect over the phone or online. Um, but having those chances like at the convention or at the trade show to go in and to see people in person and to see what some of these concepts are that we're talking about is really beneficial. 
SASTEL has been making a concerted effort to engage with communities of all sizes, including First Nations, and to talk about what that means to be a smart community. So this was actually something that SASTEL did present on um, for an education session during the 2022 SUMA convention. And um, you've mentioned that the goal of your engagements has been to better understand what problems communities are trying to solve and to share SASTEL's approach to innovation and collaboration and uh, how we can work together to try and solve these problems. From your conversation so far, what are some of the key things that you've learned? Well, first off, I've been amazed at the great conversations we've had with so many both community leaders and again, at those who are in the trenches uh, throughout the province and really their willingness to share their insight and knowledge and the challenges that they're facing on a daily basis. So in terms of themes, I, I, there's about four that really stand out to me. So first and foremost is around data. So data ownership, data privacy, and most importantly, data security. So while thankfully data breaches haven't hit Saskatchewan in any type of large scale, we all know and the data is there to back it that it is occurring and the attacks only continue to grow. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it is a growing concern both in the province and on a global basis. So there's a real and understandable concern that being able to protect a community's data is the top priority, but having the capabilities to do it and even knowing where to start is overwhelming to so many. So hearing this feedback has brought us back to the table and back to the show this year with a focus on security bundles and how we can help in terms of backing up data, protecting that data, but also, and maybe more importantly, providing the technical support and know-how so that communities don't have to go it alone. Playing off that, I think the technical skills and, and succession planning is another area of focus that we are continuing to hear about. Uh, it really plays into that first point, but a lot of communities are seeing staffing turnover that's creating a gap in that knowledge transfer of the inner workings of how communities run. Uh, you know, and this can range from a variety of, of different scenarios where, you know, applications and knowing how to use the existing applications and that knowledge isn't really documented very well, or even just knowing where, you know, a piece of equipment or infrastructure is and, and when it was last serviced. All of the information around that can often disappear when one critical key person is gone. So there's a variety of tools, such things as like an asset management platform that we just launched that can help help to enable and capture a lot of this data, processes, information that goes with it. Uh, and along with that, we can even help provide the training and the support so that we can help these communities through that transition to ensure from an administrative perspective that there's a seamless transition and a really positive citizen experience. The more I think about on the data ownership and the technical skills, one of the other common themes that we see is around analytics. So it's great that a city and a community can capture all of this data, but it's often underutilized and it can be very time consuming in terms of how to manage it. So, you know, a common theme that I'm very passionate about, and I think you'll, you'll see this amongst all of the people on behalf of SASTEL, is around how can we leverage data and analytics so that communities have the information not just for historical purposes, but for decision-making purposes. Uh, this can feel very overwhelming in terms of knowing, you know, what data do we have? How can we enhance this? Where do we start? So in that sense, we've put together a dedicated team that engages with, this, with communities to talk more about the problems to be solved, what data exists or can be created that we can utilize to help solve that problem. Too often I'm seeing that companies come in trying to, you know, to, to communities in Saskatchewan and they're really trying to hard sell these pre-established solutions without actually listening to the communities to better understand their needs, as well as that, what, you know, what's the problem we're trying to solve? So our focus is really beginning with the community's needs first, and then we work together and collaborate to see how we can solve those problems, especially understanding the various constraints that they're experiencing today, be it budget, resources, or other elements. And speaking of budgets, that's probably the fourth one that stands out to me in terms of one of the themes that we're hearing. So, you know, building off that again, dollars are tight, you know, not just for uh, organizations or businesses, but communities especially, and really smaller communities. And they don't have that access to budgets that can give them access to a lot of the tools that very large cities across Canada have access to. So one of the areas that we're focused on is how can we help leverage our capabilities in order to provide world-class solutions and software, but doing it at pricing that's affordable to all sizes of communities so that we can help 
put that infrastructure in place. And I often use the analogy of, you know, we, we don't want the first vehicle to pay for the entire highway. So how can we put in the infrastructure in place to help make things more affordable for communities of all sizes across Saskatchewan? So those are probably the four themes that I've heard and others that I've gathered through dialogue in terms of what we're hearing at events like this. Across the province, SASTEL is engaged with many different municipal organizations who seek to innovate. Contact your SASTEL account manager to learn more about some of these initiatives and how they can help your municipality today. Those definitely sound like some big ones and you've touched on a couple of things that I want to ask a little bit more about. The first one is data. You mentioned uh, how important data ownership, privacy and security it is, is um, and how important it is for communities to uh, leverage that data in making de in decision making processes. Can you explain to me a little bit more how data is an asset to your decision making processes for smart communities? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when we think about data, we, we often think of it in the following manner, and I like to sort of break it down into four points. So first being is to collect. So if we can collect data, we can start to determine what data points exist and which new ones are desired to help gather information. Information is power. So the more data we can collect, the better we can start to make through that decision-making process. From there, I think about it being in an analyzed perspective. So we move towards utilizing a variety of tools that can help input that data so that we can interpret it more properly and analyze it in an easy to understand manner. So once we've collected that data, we've analyzed it, it really then becomes, okay, well, what decisions are we making with this and how do we decide what we're going to do? So that data used for decision-making purposes includes not just making decisions at that point in time, but how can we improve the capture and management of that data for the needs that we're looking for on a go forward basis? And it's great to do that at that point in time, but the power of data to me is around predictability. So once we start to see and analyze that data, we can start to look for historical trends. And the ideal state to me is then to move towards using that data analysis for predictive modeling so that we can see incre continued increased operational gains. Uh, when I think of examples around data and the power of data, there was a community that we dealt with where they knew they had water leakage occurring. They just didn't know where or, or what was going on. So we were able to help deploy through a partnerships with a company called Greenwave, and we looked at a variety of different opportunities, and we put some sensors in place. And what was interesting with that is while we knew there was leakage happening, the hypothesis going in was, well, it must be old infrastructure where the water leak was occurring. Well, it turned out uh, through the sensors we put on that it actually was on some of the newer infrastructure that was deployed. So having access to that data helped both narrow in on where the leaks were occurring and actually reduced time because we were able to narrow it down in a more effective manner than looking at the oldest infrastructure first. So a uh, lot of great access to data can be utilized for decision-making purposes. And then using that data, like, like I said, from a predictive modeling perspective, so we can look ahead and hopefully eliminate some of the experiences that are negative around things like water loss or uh, equipment that it needed to be serviced even sooner than it was. You've made a lot of good points around uh, infrastructure there, not only in what you were just saying, but prior to that, when you were talking about um, how, the importance of considering that when going forward with budgeting, especially for smaller communities. Um, and sharing common infrastructure is a key point for a lot of smaller municipalities that um, are experiencing barriers to accessing that due to high costs. How does SASTEL smart communities uh, model reduce barriers for these communities? I think we can all agree the cost of infrastructure is often a large barrier to adoption. So one of the things that's top of mind for us is to look at how we can reduce that barrier and where we can start to see common problems or common opportunities for mass adoption. And then if needed, how can SASTEL start to maybe take that leap of faith to help support it? And so, you know, I previously used that analogy about not getting the first car to pay for the entire highway. And that's something that we do think about because, you know, in that business model, you'd never deploy any highways because the first person in often can't afford. So some of the things that we're doing to help minimize that is looking at how we can, for example, put in platforms because uh, there's often a lot of associated licensing costs that come with those platforms. 
uh, or even networks in place where the setup cost can start to be shared amongst all customers without the first one having to pay for it. So we can start to look at a total addressable market, make that leap of faith infrastructure investment, and then go out with a much more affordable pricing model for communities throughout Saskatchewan. We're also actually looking at additional types of networks. And so without getting too much into detail, there's, you know, well, obviously everyone's aware of our investment in our cellular network and the multi-million dollar investment in upgrading that to a 5G network. But there are a variety of different use cases that our cellular network either can't reach in terms of rural Saskatchewan in the middle of a farm field, or the cost can be quite prohibitive to have to build new infrastructure for some smaller use cases. So we're looking at things like a new type of wireless network that uses unlicensed spectrum. It's called LoRaWAN, just stands for Long Range Wireless Network. And what that network does is it allows us to go and deploy a variety of different new solutions that can be very cost effective and can be utilized the network itself to deploy a whole bunch of solutions. Whereas unfortunately, some of the others who are trying to use networks like that are doing them for single purpose. So they'll help a community build a network, but it will only be for one solution and nothing else can be layered on top of that, which seems like an absolute waste for the communities who are making that type of investment. So SASTEL is looking to make that investment. We've already deployed it across several communities throughout Saskatchewan and continuing to look beyond that as well. So a lot of different opportunities for us to basically lay the groundwork and put that large investment in so that we can help minimize the individual costs on a community by community basis.
This brings us to the end of another episode of MuniCast. Episode 6 of Season 4 features a conversation with Convention Education Session presenter Irina Kovrenkov. Irina comes from the Johnson Chwayama Graduate School of Public Policy to continue the conversation from their education session at the 2023 SUMA Convention on their findings from research on well-being initiatives in Saskatchewan's municipalities.